Hey, hello. You're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick. A couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today, looking at threat modeling and incident detection. So it's been bugging me for like two days now. I can't remember the name of this toy. You've probably seen it. Uh, it's a kid's toy. It's usually like blocks or it, like it rotates three animals, right? Sometimes more. So it could be like a, a lion, a tiger, and a bear. And you could have the lion, the middle lion, the bottom head of the lion. You could flip it, right? So now you got head of a lion, uh, you know, middle of a bear, tail of a tiger, right? And you can flip it again and make whatever animals you want. That, in a nutshell, is threat modeling. <laughs> and the stages of the threat model can flip from one to another. So keep that in mind because you can have one level of intrusion, flip it around, use that exact same level of intrusion to get a different target. Sort of like a, a hippogriff, right? Which is a, a horse and a eagle. Or a griffin, which is a eagle and a lion. I can remember hippogriff and hippogriff, but I can't remember the name of the toy. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. So why this matters? This matters because most of, to date, our detective activities and our emphasis has been stopping that top part of the animal, right? That first intrusion. And therefore, attackers have come up with a million and one different ways to hide their malware, to get in, to, to do different attacks, right? HTAs, which we were talking about the other day, Java, um, different executables. Harvesting credentials, uh, breaching the perimeter, web exploits, a million different ones to get that first stage. Very little emphasis has been placed on what happens on that next stage of the attack path. And therefore, what has happened is attackers will use this obfuscated malware, that obfuscated malware, this type of attack, this other type of thing, this weird, sort of convoluted, escapes through IPS and IDS and bypasses the WAF and isn't seen by the endpoint A to B attack. And then all those branches will end in, uh, in downloading the same backdoor script and executing the same lateral movement. This has two ramifications. First, when you're doing your threat modeling, you can come up with a million and one first stages and then rotate those stages accordingly and map them back to the different end states, right? So every way to get in, but maybe there's only three or four ways at the end to get to the PII, the PHI, the PCI payment data, whatever it may be that the attacker's going for. And I'm actually thinking about working on a project right now where we're trying to simplify the threat modeling down uh, just to look at those last few stages for this reason. It makes it a lot easier. Number two uh, ramification is detective controls that detect that final stage have a significant higher success rate at the moment because attackers are not being detected and caught and there's not a lot of variety there. So these are things like uh, uh, advanced threat protection by semantic, ATP, uh, CrowdStrike, uh, some of some of FireEye's placements, right? Things that are detecting the lateral moment within the environment. Uh, sim sim rules, look at what Jeremy Nielsen did at Circle City. Those types of things become very very important because there's not a lot of variety there. It's pretty consistent, and therefore a great area for you to focus your security operations team on. So take a look at that. Take a look at uh, those end stages. And if anyone can remember what the hell that toy is, hit me up. <laughs> it's really fucking me. I'll see you guys later.